Hard. Welcome back. This is going to be part two. Hopefully we can get everything done in part two. If not, then there'll be a three for decorating. I've grabbed some canvas paper, which is on 9 by 12 and some drawing paper. And the drawing paper is 70 pounds. It's a nice weight. So I've already pulled out a few of those pages and we're going to create the interior pages. So I have my trimmer and I think we decided that the interior pages need to be three and a quarter by five and a quarter and they're going to be interspersed with some of the pattern papers from Prima, the three different collections um, of Francais. Uh, now I'm drawing a blank and I put them away. So the three papers that we pulled out that has the peaches and the blues and coordinates nicely with the covers, um, cover the front and back. So that's what the back looks like with a gold pen on the edges on the front and back. Very nice. So let me grab this is the canvas paper. And I'm going to cut this into three and a quarter by five and a quarter. It's probably not the smartest, so let's do five and a quarter and then cut the three and a quarter because sometimes that makes a difference. Okay, three and a, how many you can fit into to a page? Three and a quarter. Is this look at that? That's three and a quarter. <laughs> that worked out nicely. So my husband just told me that he was having bank robbery dreams because he's watching <laughs> that's on TV and it got incorporated into his dream, which I thought was funny. Yeah, I absolutely love when Math works for you every time, sometimes accidentally. <laughs> <clears throat> so who remembers how I did that? I did a three and a quarter, and then I turned to do five and a quarter, right? And that worked out nicely. So three and a quarter. Five and a quarter. Three and a quarter. It, love math. <laughs> okay, so three and a quarter. And the reason I always repeat the numbers because I'm looking at this quite a ways off. I just barely see the tips of the um, numbers, and I sometimes mistake the two for the three because you only see the top loop. So that's why I always kind of out loud mention to myself like, I need to cut it three and a quarter. And now this one has to be at five and a quarter. And it's probably OCD. <laughs> but it does help to, you know, what, measure twice, cut once. And I am saving all these little pieces because these make wonderful stamping paper. So I am going to save this. I have a gorgeous Stamper's Best Eiffel Tower stamp, which I am going to Put on one of these pages, which I think will be a great little uh, image to have. So I'm just going to keep trimming these along. First, date one is three and a quarter, and then I did a five and a quarter, right? Oh, what did I miss? Who's, who, did someone just make a joke? Did I miss a joke? I just realized I was really dehydrated because one of the big dangers about this weather, even when you think you're not hot, hot, dehydration, by the time you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. So you need to stay hydrated all the time. So depending on how we progress, I might take another little break to grab some more drink. Oh, 
I measured something wrong here. I bet you that's not three and a quarter. It's not. Are you joking about math skills? <laughs> I work in an actuarial department, so I have to keep my math skills crispy and fresh. Three and a quarter. Of course I have most of my necessary math built into formulas. Because why would I want to repeat something over and over again? Fiona works in the bank. Make exact change. <laughs> I used to work in a bank. That was actually my first full-time job, but I worked on the trade desk. Never had to give any customers money or try to, which I think worked out best. I just dealt with millions of dollars. That's okay. Maybe that's what that is. Make sure I'm still at my... Okay, so this is not quite three and a quarter. That's why. I must have not turned the page on paper at one point. See, I lost track of how I was doing it, but it's okay. Back on track. And I think between the plain white pages, <laughs> no counting necessary. <laughs> so I did a three and a quarter, and I think I turned the, maybe I didn't, three and a quarter. Okay, anybody else been paying attention? Did I turn the, I must not have turned. So, five and a quarter, and this should be three and a quarter. Hi, Dan. One more page to go, and I think we'll have enough of the white paper. And I'll get on the pattern ones. And I think I'm just going to get one page out of each of those. So three and a quarter. Five and a quarter. There's a tiny little bit of a rough edge, and I'm just going to leave it like that because I think it's just going to add character to the pages. Okay, so now we have a healthy amount of the drawing paper and the canvas paper. I'm just going to mix them up before I put them in. I have some extras for stamping, which I am going to save. Waste not, want not. Sorry about knocking the camera. And now we're going to get on with the pattern pages. So I have that all set. Okay, so these I definitely want to do a three and a quarter this way because it's a vertical uh, journal. So I want the image in that direction. Cool. 
This doesn't really matter, but I'll go this way. Links are open if you want to post something. Just not... Nothing naughty, please, because we have minors amongst us. going to save all these little bits and pieces to use in cards or punches. Very pretty page. Three and a quarter. these have images I just want to position them I kind of captured this one I'll check it out after um, the stream Dan if you guys want to share your blogs by all means feel free since the post is open five and a quarter I'm gonna get some of the Eiffel Tower cut off that's okay Delete page. Well, this page is gorgeous. I know it sounds like I'm talking to myself, but I'm just reminding myself where to... Oh, mail's here. Can you tell? I'm going to save a little fairy, so I'm going to cut the bottom of this page. Just a few more left. Okay, this one I'm actually going to flip because I want to get more of the actual ledger. I'm going to do it this way. Two more. there's something good in the mail. I got a whole bunch of good stuff in the mail yesterday. So I suppose I shouldn't be expecting too much today. Okay. I think that's all of the cutting. I'm going to save all these and put them back in the little leaves. So now how we're going to put these together. Alright, so I want to vary the colors. So, um, And I'm going to put them face down. So one page plain or one pattern, two drawing, two canvas, um, pattern page, two drawing, two canvas. Pattern to drawing 
to canvas. Pattern to drawing to canvas. And again, because I'm putting these on rings, I can move them around at any time. Like if I don't like the flow, I can change it. Let's see what pattern that one. Let's put a peach one. Oh, only one left of the drawing paper. So I'll just. Oh no, there was. I'm like, how can there be an odd number? There should be even number of pages left. Okay. Let's do this 12. I guess there is. And thirdly, let's see how natural that is, and then I can put in some few. Okay, I'm gonna put um, pattern paper in between the drawing paper and canvas. Let's put a blue one, and then I'll kind of leaf through them and see how they look. And I can go back and stamp on any of these because I will have a flat surface. Oh, there's an extra one. Like, why would there be? That's a healthy amount of pages. I'll just dry fit this and then I'll have to punch all the holes. Now see this is now this is when I wish I had um that Tim Holtz um that looks like a screw turn. It's a healthy amount of pages, right? I don't think I'm gonna need any more. I did notice something that oh, I probably, my anal retention is going to stop me from doing it. The front and back covers are rounded at the top. I don't mind the interior bottoms be being uh, angled, but I think I'm going to definitely round the tops. So let me grab my quarter inch round hole punch, or I better empty this out. It's all the residues inside. I'm just going to empty it over my garbage can. Alright, so this is the top. I could do a couple at a time. See, that makes me feel better. <laughs> and actually, once I have all this rounded up, I'm going to take my gold pen and go around all the pages. But I don't think I'm going to go individually. I'll just take a little stack of them. Well, you'll see in a minute. So yeah, I, I like that. So quarter, uh oh, close that. Quarter inch at the top. And I can grab a couple because it's just, it's paper. I don't want to cut too much off the top because there's not a lot of wiggle room where the holes are going to go for the pages. So I definitely want to make sure that I'm mindful of that. There's really not a lot of building in this little project. It's just a matter of picking out the papers and trimming them down and finding the ring. So this might be the tricky part because I have gold introduced into this. I have silver rings. I'll have to check to see what colors I have because maybe I'll use a color 
I thought I only had bright colors, but we'll see. I might have to alcohol ink to tone maybe the silver one down. So actually this came together a little quicker than I had thought. It, the most time consuming part I think is picking and trimming the paper, but once you have it, it's pretty quick. Just noticed one of my pages is a little wider. Must have been when I was gabbing and not paying attention, so let me just trim that down a little bit. I'm grabbing a long pair of scissors. And it's the ruffly edge, so I'm just going to really take the edge off. Using the quarter inch. Hey, Carrie. Did I miss anyone else that's joined us? I don't want to be unhospitable and not say hi. Okay. So now we have all the pages. So there's the front, the pages, the back. It's a healthy amount of paper. So now it's a matter of punching the holes. Now I think what might work the best is if I create a template making a little um, Parisian journal. Um, someone sent me this in a uh, rack for us that I was hosting a swap for a European pantry and I thought this would make a beautiful, it's a piece of wood, would make a beautiful cover so I created a back cover already uh, out of chipboard and some eyelets and then we just cut some uh, Prima paper, some drawing paper, and some canvas paper, and just intersperse them throughout and trim them down. So I think if I create, because I need to match up the holes for the front, if I create a template, that might be the best thing. So let me just grab a piece of chipboard and see if I could do that. It would be helpful if it was a bigger <laughs> chipboard than that. Um, I have a little refuse box of chipboard. And of course I'm pulling out all the tiny pieces. for me, I mean unfortunately I don't have one of those um, Tim Holtz tools which probably would have been ideal for this situation. Look at that, it's exactly the same width. So I really only need a little piece of this. Yeah, I'm, all the, it's like custom made. <laughs> so I'm just going to, well, you know, I'll just, for simplicity, I'll use the quarter inch punch for this. Okay. 
and then my sharp pencil. And actually, because I don't want this to move, I'm just going to put a piece of tape loosely over it and then vigorously circle. <laughs> so I have So there's my template, and I'm going to punch that with my crocodile just to make sure I'll line it up afterwards. There's nothing worse than punching all this paper and finding out that it was misaligned. So I want the holes to be larger because I want them to move freer on, or freely, on the rings. So I'm going to use rings for this. So I'm going to take my pencil mark and line it up inside the, you see that? Punch that. Do the same thing, center that. Check to make sure that when I put that down, my holes are lined up, which they are. So now I have my template, which I could use way easier because I have so many pages to do. All right, so now I'm going to I'm going to try to do this productively. So let me grab couple of clips. And let's see, I probably get through this many pages. So I'm going to line them up across the top and the sides. Flip them. And then reline up this way. I want to make sure to release this little bundle so I get a clean cut each time. I'm just aiming it toward myself so I can make sure that I'm in the center. Looking good. So now I'm going to do that for the rest of the pages. And as you can see, they are kind of on the periphery, but they'll be fine because I did make them larger than the front covers, so they should hopefully go smoother. I just noticed they're just a tiny bit off here. Just want to make sure I get this pretty precisely. I'm going to keep them in the same order that we have already decided we want the stack in. So lining up, clipping, don't need my hair in there.
Armstrong, I'm on track. Had I not been following um, this particular pattern, I totally would have used uh, my two hole punch because that would have made things nice and simple and concise and quick. But because we are trying to, oh, I think I just punched some of the chipboard. That's another thing that if when you're using a template, you have to be careful not to repunch the chipboard that you're using for the template. That's why I'm trying so hard to line this up. Mm -mm. I might have reached capacity here. I'm going to have to stick with smaller, fewer number of pages. Patience is important. <laughs> Is anyone working on anything today? Anything in particular? Nearly done, I think one more, two more than, well I appreciate the company guys, I'm, I really do, it's, I love the interactive nature of Ustream. You know, I have not gotten into the she art at all and I don't know if it's because I haven't given it a try or because I miss painting so much. Oh, that's cool, Carrie. Carrie's dad was in a car show. Really? I have to give it a try. See, I was a fine arts major many, many years ago now, but still. And I do kind of miss it, so... I haven't busted out my paints in so long now. I had a very dark subject matter when I painted, so I think that may be why I haven't done it in a while. You know, perspective changes as you get older. Oh, I can't wait to see your video, Carrie. You know, I'm. you might not see a lot of comments from me, Carrie, but I stalk your channel all the time. I have some of those. <laughs> I just haven't put them into use. So I'm going to save this little um, template that I just created in case I want to use it again. I 
I'm just gonna, I'm just going to tuck it inside my little, <laughs> my little case. Well, because you, Carrie always has the most fabulous deals that she finds. And she's the same name on YouTube, Duffer9904. So if you guys haven't seen her professional shopping skills, you need to stop by, take a look. Somebody, I, people comment all the time on my channel that I shop a lot, but I also do create a lot, so. Okay, hopefully that's all on track. Let me grab a three ring binder, a uh, three uh, ring to see how lined up we are at this point. Ow, just poked myself with something. Okay. So I, I know I have some color rings. I might have to move something around to get to them. So you'll be staring at a box. <laughs> what I try to do when I bring something home from a store or an online shop or whatever, I try to create something right away because that tends to work for me. And then I get all excited about the particular product that I used and I put goes into my regular rotation. <laughs> okay. Okay, I have these shiny blue rings. might not be the final one used but at least we could try it right and I also have these poly coated blue ones oh maybe those might be good because I'm thinking the silver doesn't really go oh I have gold ones but they're like an obnoxious gold this might not be big enough. But we could try it. Yeah, I don't think this is wide enough. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You like the gold? The gold's the right size. Actually, I have... Um, I don't have more of those. I could have sworn I had another one of those. conduct an experiment. Yeah, I have only one of this size gold. I must have used it on something else because I thought, ooh, yuck, gold. <laughs> Who would have thought that I'd end up using it? Okay, that tones it down. You see the difference between the two? I have rub and buff, but I don't know if I have the antique gold. I have to look. But this um, paint might do it. Yeah, this other gold is just way too... Too goldy gold. It's like Goldilocks. Okay, that might work. But I, I, won't, have, I won't be able to put them on for a while. They, it has to completely dry. So let me, let me color those up and set them aside to dry because this is a better size. This might make it a little hard. This might be too small. So we agreed on the size. And yeah, this one is just, it's, it's a very tight fit. Okay. 
looks like I need to pick up a few more colored rings to keep in my stash of rings. So we don't need the blue one. Just use those two. Okay. Well, that was a much easier decision than I thought it would be. Oh, let me shake this up. And then we can start decorating the cover. Oh yeah, that's definitely going to have to dry. I'll have to go back to it in a few minutes and do the other side. It's just knocking down some of that very yellow green base gold down to the antique gold look, which I like better. But in the meantime, we could color the pages. So let me set that aside somewhere where I'm not going to stick my hand in. So I'm going to grab. I'm just going to hold them with my hand and rub the gold across the edge. I don't want to press on the paper, so I'm just pressing down with the, the nib on the paper where the rings are. Oh, what kind of sale is Scrapbook having? I haven't been online most of the day because we were out and about. I need to go pick up some of those basic gray companion pieces. Okay, here's the trick. I'm going to try not to touch it. I mean, my big ideas. They have some cute things. Okay, love these Krylon pens. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, but this is what I'm doing. I'm going to grab probably a third of the paper, kind of the width of the chisel tip. So that looks nice. And once it's sitting inside the book, hopefully it will look as nice. I'm just going to lean that over there and grab another half of the rest of the stack. So I'm just tapping down to get a edge that where they're all together. You get the feeling I'm not gonna keep this. This might be going in a giveaway. Ok, 
Okay, I hear cops in the background now. And my favorite all-time cops episode was when a guy was trying to convince the officers that the pants that they found drugs in, which were on his body, were not his pants. But officer, these are not my pants. I've never accidentally put somebody else's pants on, let alone put drugs in them. I'm going to have to flip this this way. And then the last bunch. Anyone else? I mean, has anyone ever accidentally put drug-laden pants on that were not theirs? But it's your ID in them. But these are not my pants. Really, no. Oops, it's okay. I squished a little on a page. Ideally, if I had a book binding tool where I could squeeze the pages and just have them all like that, that'd be the easiest way to do that. But sometimes you don't have all the right tools and you have to make do or compromise and it looks like I'm gonna end up with lots of gold on my fingers so I just got some on my nails which is okay okay so it's this way yeah. who's that who was the character in James Bond that got painted with gold paint anybody remember alone for now. Set that aside. Try to clean my hands a little bit. I'm a little golden. It's okay. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the papers together and fan them out so to make sure that the paint doesn't dry them together. I should probably do this on a piece of paper. I'm going to scrap a piece of paper. If I need to, I can go back and get a little more gold on them. So that's the back. So now I can start decorating. Okay. So I pulled out some of these lilies. Which could get a little bit of gold on them. And I also have bling, but I think I need other flowers. So let me grab a couple of packs of blue flowers. I like to add some blue. Why did I find a lot of 
gorgeous roses. So I'm going to use aqua. Blue poppies. Mix blue. There's this blue, sweetheart blooms, these little ones. Tiny little rose buds. Probably enough, right? So I need to plug in my heat gun. Which I probably should have a little while ago. Did I say heat gun or glue gun? I meant glue gun. So we could wait for us. And I think I want to go lighter blue. So I like these roses. I don't want to cover up too much. So I'm wondering I might have to pull out some peach because I do want to have a little bit of peach introduced. a few of these to see how they look against the... I'm going to keep odd numbers. Yeah, I think it'll be nice to add a little bit of peach just to counter all that blue. And I'll have to pull out some of my peach flowers to see which ones would go nicely. And there's that uh, streak of peach across the sky horizon on the image. So, and I think I am going to trim off the trim off the stems. I wonder if I have peach skeleton leaves. 
And I definitely want to stay further away from or have enough room near the uh, um, near the holes for the eyelets or for the rings. Probably get one in here. I wonder if I had peach ones in that color in that pattern. Pink. Okay. And peach lilies. That might be nice to add. And then I have orange, which is a little too bright. I think this peach might be nice. I am making a, um, a Parisian journal. We already have all the pages created. And now we're just covering the, or decorating the cover. And the antique gold rings are just drying off to the side. Let me rethink this. Let me move these all off. I need to pop their little heads so they sit without a problem. This is being recorded and I have a recording of the first part already up on Ustream and I'll bring it over to YouTube as well. Because not everyone is successful watching stuff on Ustream for some reason. I definitely like the peach and uh, introduction of peach. And I can use the others as fillers. And there's my glue warming up. I don't want to cover a lot of the image. I wasn't ordinarily where we tend to gravitate towards decorating the bottom, bottom side sometime most of the time this particular side but I'm thinking because I want to keep this image as much as I can intact just a little bit poking over it um, I think might be nice and I think I have some sprays which I can use as fillers something shiny because I definitely want something shiny and I am going to put in some of these lovely 
sea foam color. One's in as well. And again, it'll, it'll be a little tighter because it'll be glued, but I'm just kind of positioning it. So I'm going to take another quick break. I'm going to stop the recording here. So they will be a part three. Give everybody a chance to go grab a drink if they want to. And I can go grab um, some of my shiny objects, shiny things. So if you guys want to hang out, I'll be back in a few. So stay tuned for part three.